All right. So uh, the president is firm in his mind. He has made his opinion known on how he wants to fight the corona pandemic. So we are joined by Dr. Augustina Silverken, and uh, she's a research scientist. Well, yeah, she's with the Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research. Uh, Doc, good evening, and thank you for your time on News 360. Good evening, and good evening to all your cherished listeners and viewers. Absolutely. Uh, Doc, we, we are kind of experiencing some partial lockdown at the moment. I mean, from the president's statement last night, we, we, we can uh, deduce that. But do you think this partial lockdown can help Ghana deal with the virus? Um, indeed, um, I, I support the measures taken by by the president. I'm positive that um, if we adhere to all the measures, we should be able to um, limit some way, somehow, the transmission of the, the virus. Importantly, within this um, two-week two -week, um, lockdown, partial lockdown period, I'm sure we'll be able to identify more positive cases. We'll be able to pull them out of the entire community or some communities. We'll be able to isolate them. We'll be able to manage them. And importantly, we'll be able to aggressively trace their first contact, their second contact. And then also importantly, I expect that whilst doing or whilst adhering to these measures, we will also enhance our testing because if we don't test but we sit down and just um, go through this partial lockdown period, then at the end of the day, we will not really be able to identify any of the cases. So it is a okay. laudable idea and I'm all, all for it. All right. So uh, we also understand that um, certain areas are exempted from this partial lockdown, like the markets, the pharmacies and the financial services. But still people are rushing to those places to make last minute purchases, to make cash some um, amount from the bank to home and so on. Do you think they need further information in that area? Yes. I mean, driving through town today, I was I was amazed. And um, I became worried because if um, we want to, to go through social or physical distancing, but the numbers around are huge, people are moving, we, have, we see a lot of crowds, then if we don't take care, the purpose for the measures the president expressed yesterday may really not even work out. And I'm happy the interior minister has come out to say that it is not really very useful for people to be doing something known as panic buying or last minute buying. So I think people should relax. Um, thankfully, there will be some leeway for people to go out and um, buy whatever they need. But uh, for me, I keep on saying that, look, if you don't really have anything to do in town, the expectation is that you stay at home. You adhere to the usual hand washing, use of sanitizers, bit so that at least you will not be able to um, carry the virus. Right. Certain hot spots have been identified, for instance, in the Great Accra region, Ashanti, and then the others. Do you think they are enough to kickstart the fight against uh, spreading the virus? So I was I was excited when the president used the word hotspots because I have been yearning to hear the word hotspots and I'm happy that uh, the public health division has been able to identify some hotspots. But indeed, um, the numbers churned out are a bit low in terms of the the hotspots. Of course, we don't want them. Um, to see an escalation of these numbers. And I guess that um, apart from the identification of these hotspots, one way we can also use to identify some more potential hotspots may be to rely on the hot, the hot lines given out. I mean, we can go into the data so we can look at the calls received. I'm sure the data is the calls are hosted somewhere. So we can look into the calls and for example, we may at the end of the day realize that, look, there are a lot of calls coming from, I don't know, Kasua or Ewutu Senya, and we may have already identified a positive case around Ewutu Senya so that 
by so doing, we will also be able to identify more hotspots. I think we need a lot of uh, technology-related things to enable us identify some of these hotspots. But I guess it is not just about identification of these hotspots, but then it is also about moving into these hotspots and then ensuring that people are tested and people are traced and the positive ones are isolated and managed. Right. That was Dr. Augustina Silverkern, and uh, she, is, uh, she works with the Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research as a research scientist. Thank you for your insight.